Welcome to Thursday Live on At Home with Charlene. Happy and healthy new year. If you like anything about real estate, you will like this show. I have a few featured guests today. I have Alan Clarkson, home inspector with Kiwi Homes. And I have Matt Fuller, contractor with Fuller Pools. And my sidekick today is Fred Tazartis with Century 21 Troop Real Estate. We have a great, impactful show today, but... First of all, how was everyone's New Year? Very good. Any big plans? Anything fun that anyone did? Uh, we did some camping. Took the kids out uh, to the desert and did some dirt bike riding. Nice. There you go. What'd you do, Alan? Yeah, well, I enjoy dirt bike riding too, but unfortunately I can't do that. The wife has said, no dirt bikes for you. You're a big boy now. You don't bounce back no more. <laughs> so, when did she take that away from you? Uh, a little while back when I was looking back into it again. You know, I'm from New Zealand originally, and uh, as you can tell, there's an accent. Um, but growing up in New Zealand, we had a lot of dirt bikes. That was, was a fun thing. So opposite seasons here. Um, we got New Year's in New Zealand, the first country in the world to get the New Year's. So I managed to call my mum back in New Zealand a day ahead of time on New Year's Eve. It was already New Year's Day there. So I had some fun catching up See, with the family. See, they're ahead of us over there. Yeah, they're 20 hours ahead of California. So it was a fun time just to call and, and talk to the family and brothers and sisters and, and my mum. So it was great. Nice. What about you, Fred? I just stayed home and relaxed. I did the New Year's Eve on the East Coast. So this way, 9 o'clock, I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> Hey, that's a way to do it. <laughs> I was told we were going to have a couple of my daughter's friends over. We wanted to have a couple of the parents over. So we did a last minute New Year's party at the house and we had a good time too. What'd you do, Cody? Uh, I stayed home and watched the new Blade Runner movie finally. I waited for it to come out. So I saw it. Nice. Mm, very good. I haven't seen that one. I liked it. It was pretty good. I recommend it. Okay. Very long. About three hours. So uh, it was wow. Say, it's long and intense. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's a long one. I don't know if I have a patience for a three-hour movie. I start getting fidgety. Well, we wanted to jump in today and um, talk about home inspections. Um, one of the most important parts of, one, a home purchase, and two, also just making sure that you have everything intact in your home properly. Um, I have Alan here to, to go over some tips um, on things that we need to make sure you're doing in your home um, and, and things to definitely look out for when you're looking to sell your home, purchase a home, just some tips. So what do you have for us, Alan? Okay, thanks, Charlene. So uh, the first things I always see um, that a, a seller can prepare as far as their house, if it's vacant, you need to make sure the utilities are still on. Often the gas is off when I get there. It's locked by the gas company. So if the house is vacant, again, electrical on, water on, gas on. We need to make sure they're all on so I can test all the appliances in the house. Um, but a regular house, often things that I get missed will be um, a carbon monoxide um, mm -hmm. tester. Mm -hmm. um, that's required on if it's a two-story house, upstairs and downstairs. Um, very simple to install. You can get plug-ins. You can get ones that mount to the ceiling or the wall. Um, where they go is um, up to the manufacturer. Where, where they say down low, up high. They give the advice, uh, follow them. And then smoke detectors also in the houses. We need them in the bedrooms and the hallways. Um, often often they're missed. And I, I, my understanding is if the appraiser comes through and they're missing, they mm -hmm. might call those out too. So simple things like that. Um, you can look at your water pressure. Um, that's a, a big thing I see a lot. Um, the pressure regulator is starting to uh, fail. Uh, and the water pressure ideally is around 65 to 75 uh, pounds per square inch of water pressure uh, coming into the house. Um, but often, the, the, without you knowing, without testing it, the regulator is starting to fail. You can't visually see it failing. Uh, so you need to put a, a water pressure uh, regular, uh, tester on a, an outside uh, force on the outside of the house and get a good pressure reading. They'll give you a, a heads up on what to expect. So that's something we always test. Now, now does the water pressure... Regulate and increase the water pressure or decrease it, or what does it actually do? So the water pressure regulator um, the, is, is controlling the, the pressure coming into the house from the street, which is too high uh, for the house. And so it's reducing the water pressure to a, a functional pressure that works for the house. Uh, when it's too high, when it's up to like, I often see 90 pounds per square inch, 100 pounds per square inch of water pressure, it's just putting unnecessary due pressure on the plumbing components of the house. And if there's a weak point, it will find it. 
Um, so it's good good to watch out for that. Okay, so like in my house, I'm taking a shower and someone flushes the toilet and all of a sudden the water pressure goes down. That means I need a new regulator? or uh, Not necessarily. With, with plumbing, there's many components involved. Um, depends on what type of plumbing you have. Is it an older house of galvanized plumbing? Um, are, are the valves um, working as they should within the house? Is there a good balance from bathroom to bathroom? Um, sometimes there's different restrictions from fittings um, that are inside the walls that you can't see. Yeah, so then that needs a plumber to really come and investigate further to, to see what the, the issues really are with that. You're listening to Charlene on award-winning KHTS Radio. And I want to thank again my guests for coming on today. And one thing that I was even thinking about when you were talking was to make sure the gas is on, the water's on, the electricity's on, because some properties that you come and do an inspection for might be a vacant property. Um, it might be an investment property that somebody had and they had a renter in there. The renter came out and all the utilities were shut off. Mm -hmm. But that's definitely something we need to remember to advise. Correct. Absolutely. And I see that several times. Um, usually the buyer's agent's calling the listing agent. Is it everything on? They say, yes, it's on. We got confirmation. They told me it was on. And I arrived there and the guest company got there before I did and locked it off. I mean, I would even think in a home inspection, probably one of the main pieces of the property that you're going to look at is the attic or the roof, because a normal homeowner isn't going to look into these areas unless their, their inspector is. Is there anything in those two areas that you normally see? I mean... Uh, yes, absolutely. And um, often when it comes to roofs um, and plumbing, kind of go together as far as the number one concerns from uh, potential buyers. Uh, so I'm always getting the question, is there a leak? Is the water leaking? Is the water flowing okay? Is, does the roof leak? Well, you know, I can't see if it's not raining. Um, you can do a water test, of course, but I will get on the roof and walk the roof, even if it's a concrete tile. Uh, there's a way to do that uh, correctly. But often seeing you know, maybe two, three, four, five broken tiles, or even just tiles that are displaced, meaning they're slidden out of position where they should be. And, and now that it's exposed the un underlayment paper, and then over time the sun rots the paper, and now it's exposing the, uh, the, the wood um, underneath the roofing material, and that's a, that's a potential leak for sure. But we'll get in the attic as well. I'll be looking on the underside of the roof, looking for previous signs of, of water leaks. Now, if it's an older house, like I had one this morning, it was uh, 1949. It's an older house. I saw some water stains in the attic. Was that from 10 years ago or was it from 20 years ago? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. It's an old house. It's been through a bunch of different uh, roofing materials, but I'm looking for any potential wood rot and damage from the, from the water. Um, and then, of course, I'm looking for ventilation in the attic so humidity is not building up in there, causing moisture as well. So you probably have a, a checklist of everything that you go through as you're in searching through a property. And what's the time frame once you you go through the entire property, you make your assessment of it, do the agent and the homeowners get a copy of the inspection report? Or Yes, absolutely. I, I like to, at the end of inspection, um, averaging a newer house, maybe two and a half hours, uh, for the inspection time, and then I create a PDF file of the report, uh, um, including photographs saying what I found in the report, highlighting things that need more particular attention, and they'll get it the same day. Uh, so I like to get it out pretty quick. I know there's mm -hmm. uh, some, it's an exciting time, but it can be a, a time of pressure as well, so I want to do all I can to help relieve any tension that's going on in, in this big <laughs> transition, you know. And I've done many inspections of Alan, and one of the things he does also is after the inspection, he actually walks through the house with the buyer and sort of points out some of the issues and, you know, sort of puts them at ease. And, you know, because a home inspection could be scary. You know, so, you know, you could think the house is falling apart when it really isn't. And he actually goes through the thing and say, you know, this is this, this is what we could do, things like that. So it also helps the agent to know what to ask for, you know, when the time comes. And I mean, I had Alan do uh, inspection for us when we were buying our house. And the nice thing about the inspection report that you'll see for a homeowner and, and for the agent when they look at it is, you know, there's a highlight of the most concerned items, I guess. Mm -hmm, and then you have your section of items that are of least concern, but, you know, just you might want to look into it or it might be something you want to check down the road. So you can see on there, okay, these are the ones we want to really address. And here's, 
some of the other items that might not be as much of a concern, but you want to make us aware of it. You know, something's not working properly or something, a little valve might not, might need to be replaced or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, correct. And then, you know, again, my main focus um, in a home inspection is going to be um, big ticket items. Um, things are going to cost you a lot of money or mm -hmm. safety issues. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so big ticket items would be you know, roof, um, heating and cooling systems, plumbing in the house. That They get a lot more attention than perhaps um, does the door latch correctly when I open and close it as it is the hinge flowing nicely. That's small and cosmetic and can be taken care of easily. I'm looking to save people money on big ticket items and, and keep them safe where it's a safety issue. So, um. Yeah, I mean, if you have major electrical issues or an old electrical panel in some of the older homes or something to do with wiring, I mean, those are things that you want to know about or that might be a concern down the road. So we know as a homeowner that this might be something we want to look at in a year or two and maybe we want to think about replacing that at some point sooner than later, you know, because we don't know if it's an out-of-date you know, Correct. panel or not. Right, exactly. We see the older panels and then uh, we see older water heaters beyond their life expectancy. So I'm trying to let them mm -hmm. give them a heads up what to expect in the future. Exactly, exactly. Well, you're listening to Charlene on award-winning KHTS Radio. And we have, I just want to say one other quick thing about Alan. What I thought was a, a, a little excellent tidbit that he provides with his clients is he always comes with fresh refreshments sodas or teas or waters and a little snack because not only is it you know an agent is meeting their client there but it gives it just a little extra um i don't know it just gives a little extra homey feeling that mm -hmm. you still yeah. doing that i am indeed a <laughs> little little touch from home in new zealand just a little friendly uh thing we do in new zealand to you know mm -hmm. host people bring them into our homes to uh, to feed them when they're the guests, so it kind of I just carried it through to mm -hmm. you know, my my business and it's uh, things. But I think it's a nice it. touch. I I, yeah. I mean, everybody always will say, "Oh, he had refreshments and some <laughs> snacks," and I think that's nice. Well, thank you so it gives, much. It gives a nice. And, touch. and in the winter, he usually brings coffee and hot chocolate. Also, <laughs> you have, you're going to have a machine in the back of your car, right? <laughs> and and, and well, the one thing, the one thing I like espresso. also is like when we're doing a vacant home, he'll actually bring chairs for us to sit down on. See? So, right. portable chairs as well. I mean that that just it yeah. it doesn't it, it's just a little extra mile that helps you know to solidify the way that you do your business. I think that that goes a long way. Well, cheers. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. It definitely goes a long way. Well, again, you're listening to Charlene on award-winning KHTS Radio, and I also have a long-term friend of mine here, Matt Fuller with Fuller Pools. And I know we have a lot of information um, that he's going to talk about that I wasn't aware of and none of us were aware of as we were chit-chatting a little bit before the show started. Um, so I'd like to introduce Matt and, and have him touch on some points if you're thinking about putting in a pool, maintaining your current pool, etc. So Matt. Yes, hi, how are you? My name is Matt Fuller with Fuller Pools. I hold a C53 contractor's license, which... Uh, allows us to construct new swimming pools and remodel. Uh, I've been doing it for about 24 years now, and uh, I've seen a lot out there, and I wanna just share some things with uh, our listeners and um, brief them on um, some situations that I've encountered lately uh, over the last few years. Uh, swimming pools that were constructed back uh, prior to, let's say, 1983, roughly, it was very common practice for swimming pools to be constructed with copper plumbing. Uh, copper plumbing on a house, good. Copper plumbing on a pool, not so good. Uh, reason being, there's chemically treated water in that pool. And often uh, through a swimming pool's life, maybe 30 years or so, the chemistry will get out of balance. Um, and this is why it's important to employ a uh, reputable service person. But if the swimming pool pH level ever gets acidic, uh, it will wear and erode the inside of those copper pipes, which uh, eventually will create a pinhole and you will have a leaking swimming pool. This is uh, something that uh, usually this is only known by people in my industry, but uh, it's something that our listeners should pay attention to. And you can often identify that out at the swimming pool area in the pool equipment area where the pipes uh, come out of the ground. Um, if this pool is old, well, often that uh, pool plumbing and pumps and 
I meant to say pumps and filters and heaters have been replaced and the PVC above ground is uh, visible, but right at the bottom where it goes into the dirt or the concrete pool equipment pad, you will often see a small piece of copper there, which could be an indicator that that swimming pool has copper plumbing. And um, how, how often would somebody look and notice or, or even think about whether this is something they should be having or not? Because, I mean, I have a pool, and I, I didn't think about any of that. Well, that's why you listen to At Home with Shirley. <laughs> that's, that's right. right. I mean, know we learn, I actually learn something every every time we have a show. <laughs> there is good information. We I think uh, everybody that I, I have listening is always saying that they get a lot of great information from here. But my question was, does it matter whether you have a... Um, a saltwater pool or a chlorine pool or did any of those make differences or that's a great question uh well first off if you do have an older swimming pool that was constructed prior to the 80s when the transition was made and it became common practice to use pvc uh plumbing throughout the pool uh if you have a pool that's prior to the 80s i it's not a candidate for saltwater sanitation Hmm. um <clears throat> that will further erode the internal uh, lining of the pot of that copper plumbing. And so um, that's very important for anybody in my industry, uh, you know, guys that are doing these tor- types of repairs and installations, that's one of the first things they look for is, is the swimming pool filter a stainless steel tank? If it is, it's really not a good candidate for salt sanitation. But more importantly, in the fundamentals of the construction of the pool is a copper plumbing, not a candidate for salt sanitation. Hmm. Uh, the, really, the, the, the main reason for copper plumbing to fail in a pool to leak is the pool person, uh, at some point in the life of the pool, overdid the acid, added too much acid and got the pH too acidic. And very common for the you know acid being heavier than water will go to the bottom of the pool to the main drain area and it's very common for the main drain area to leak first and people to dive in that pool like leak location companies and put in a rubber expansion plug in that bottom main drain eliminating that bottom suction port means that we don't turn over the water uh, as efficiently as it could be and um, when you do plug that we recommend if you're in that situation to uh, add a floor cleaning system, you know, like one of these little uh, automatic robots that clean your pool on a vacuum. Mm -hmm. Uh So when, if we have an older pool, we're probably a chlorine type pool, someone's going to put in a newer pool, they would have an option of selecting whether it was going to be salt water or if it was going to be a chlorine type pool, because depending on that is how you structure everything that's built around that pool, I I would assume. Well, nowadays we're all using, uh, you know, PVC Schedule 40 plumbing, um, and uh, often we're oversizing that plumbing so we have good hydraulic flow. Um, There's a lot to be said about that um, when comparing between different builders. There are many shortcuts that can be taken, uh, but uh, nowadays everyone's using PVC. You don't have that issue with copper any longer. So just about all new pools are candidates for saltwater sanitation if that's the direction you'd like to go. Now, let me ask you a question because I'm always confused on this. Mm-hmm. I know we eliminated the salt water um, water softeners in mm-hmm. Santa Clarita. Mm-hmm. Can we still have salt water pools? You know, I can't answer that, to be honest with you. I'm not going to tell you something I don't know. Um, I, most of my construction takes place in Los Angeles okay. and city of Los Angeles. I did notice that uh, I have a salt uh, softener system uh, in my home in Agua Dulce. And I was having a hard time finding that salt. Right. Um, and then it appeared again at our Vons. So <laughs> I'm not at sure what's... Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Vons. Okay, you Vons and Aqua Dulce if you need salt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In the most random places. <laughs> right next to the dog food. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can come into some of these stores and, I mean, I didn't even know CVS had a clothing section. There you go. <laughs> you know, we walked into CVS and it was like, oh, they have a whole clothing area here. Some cute stuff over there. I mean, who would have known? <laughs> Just don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> we don't reveal the secrets. <laughs> Oh, you're listening to Charlene on award-winning KHTS Radio. We have great information today. We're going to head out for a quick break. And when we come back, we have more tips on home inspection and pools for spring and summer. 
Santa Clarita's premier senior living community, Oakmont of Santa Clarita, is leasing, bringing comfort and luxury to assisted living. Seniors can enjoy five-star amenities, panoramic views, easy access to the freeways, and nearby shopping centers in a world-class community that provides an advanced continuum of care. No other community has this kind of luxury and amenities in our valley. You'll find good health, vitality, and purpose at Oakmont of Santa Clarita. Stop by for a tour. Visit oakmontofsantaclarita.com. There is only one language spoken at Thai Dish, and it sounds something like this. Mmm, 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 this is great. Once people get a taste of Thai dishes, there's really no reason to do any more talking. Mmm, mm -hmm. Make it full of mm. flavor, make it delicious, only at Thai Dishes. Enjoy the atmosphere, love the food. Thai Dishes on Valencia Boulevard for free delivery, 253-FOOD. That's 253-F-O-O-D. Oh, mmm. KHTS strives to give the Santa Clarita Valley all the information they need. And when our computers aren't working the way they should, we call Resurgence, your true source for IT. Resurgence provides outstanding customer service while also providing the highest technical ability. They strive to do what's best to improve and protect your business. For more information on Resurgence, call 349-4114 or visit resurgenceit.com. Bob, I don't believe you. You're jaded, Blanche. Read my lips, Bob. You've had a history of exaggeration. It's true. They're building Castaic High School. Castaic High. Like in Castaic, California. That's right, Blanche. Prove it, Bob. Go to your computer, type in castaichighproject.com, and get free and frequent updates. What's that web address again? CastaicHighProject.com With fervor, like you really mean it. CastaicHighProject.com Your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You're listening to At Home with Charlene on award-winning KHTS Radio. And you know what? I forgot to give a shout-out to Coach Ron, who's usually hosting this show with me. He's not feeling 100% today, but he did assure me he was listening. So we are hope we're making you proud, Coach, on our show. Um, we're coming back in, and Fred had a good question that we were talking about on break. So um, we're going to let him answer that or ask that question. Okay, so as I show homes to potential buyers, the question is always, should I buy a house with a pool, or is it cheaper to find a lot and then build a pool into the house? And I don't know what the answer is to that. Well, in my opinion, uh, <laughs> this <laughs> probably doesn't serve me very well, but uh, the honest truth is that uh, searching for a, a home with an existing swimming pool that has PVC plumbing is uh, probably the best route for your buyers and for your listeners. Uh, remodeling of a swimming pool can be done quickly. Uh, permits can be acquired easily, and uh, the costs um, relatively are, are much less. Um, so I think there's a bit more um, value there if you were to search and find homes that have an existing uh, understanding that you build in your, your budget the costs for the a remodel or to make it your own or, or, or whatever needs it may have. And when you say remodeling the pool, I mean, what are my options? I mean, what, what can I do? Uh, often a remodel consists of uh, replacing the coping, which is the top cap masonry uh, on the top of the pool wall, the piece of masonry that's closest to the water's edge. Mm -hmm. Often it's brick or stone or concrete. Uh, means replacing the water line tile, which is a, usually a six inch band of tile that goes around at the water level of the pool, and replastering of the pool and new equipment. Sometimes we'll be asked, uh, currently bidding a few jobs where we would be adding a, a spa to the pool in the shallow end area, that sort of thing. Maybe um, uh, retrofitting an automatic pool cover to provide safety and uh, uh, efficiencies in terms of heating and uh, evaporation, that sort of thing. You know, I was just thinking, though, you know, say you find a great home in Acton where you have all this property, or maybe you inherited a property that has a large yard, or, um, you know, I know I know plenty of uh, friends who have purchased property for a large piece of land, 
mm-hmm. you know, because it's a large piece of land's tied to that property. Um, but there isn't a pool, mm-hmm. so they don't have an option. But if they decide to put a pool in it, it's going to be a brand new pool. Um, a friend of mine recently put a pool in, and she had the job bid and work was being done and they tapped into a water line to the sprinkler system that they didn't realize was there that had to be removed and moved over, which was an additional expense. So, I mean, these are things that you don't normally think about. You're just thinking, I want a pool. I'm going to put it in this space over here. We're going to do some new landscaping. But if somebody's looking to put a brand new pool in, what are some of the things that they need to consider and do? And there's a lot more to it than I think we know. Sure. Uh, Many things can go unmentioned. It depends on the company that you've chosen to work with. Um, At Fuller Pools, I do my best to not only verbalize these things that I may take for granted being in this industry for so long um, and assume that a client will know is coming or they should include additional money in their budgets for. Um, These things such as, like you mentioned, um, sprinklers. Well, we're going to dig a swimming pool in a backyard with grass that currently has irrigation. So... Um, I'm very specific on my agreements and my proposals um, with an exclusion section that identifies the different items um, like this. Uh, Tractors got to pass through the yard. We're going to get some ruts from the tires or tracks. Um, There's going to be a need for a landscaper to replace that sod, that sort of thing. Um, People that haven't done this before, that may go overlooked, be overlooked, and later they're surprised and sometimes even upset with me that it wasn't mentioned. So it's important that I um, paint the picture of what you're getting into. Construction's never easy, um, and selecting the right contractor for a good construction experience is important, and part of that role is to inform the client and paint the picture of what they're going to go through. So if, if someone's putting in, let's just say, a typical pool, um, you know, nothing too big, nothing too small, pool, spa in their backyard, no... Uh, you know, everything has to be done from start to finish. So you're going to have to dig, you're going to have to do go about your whole process. I mean, what type of time frame does somebody look at? What type of, of um, sure. I mean, landscaping, do, is that in, in, encompassed in that bid to, you know, resod once the pool's down? I mean, what do they look for? Because this is, this is all something, you know, people probably have questions on. Sure. Uh, generally, I, I, you know, an average swimming pool, in the average neighborhood with level ground, there's many different factors that can complicate or extend extend the uh, build time frame. But uh, generally speaking, I tell the clients it's a three three month build, uh, maybe extended due to rain or weather, like we're getting into the those months now. Uh, but uh, yeah, they can expect, generally speaking, a three month build. Um, we take it from the beginning, uh, you know conceptual designs, sketches, and transition that into a a CAD drawing and provide them with a proposal uh, with, you know, drawings, which is a really nice, useful tool because it's like a uh, video game, like a 3D video game. You're walking through your backyard, and there are details of that backyard that make them feel like, wow, this is home, and it is our dream completed. So it's a very nice tool for that. I mean, just as if you were going to do interior design on the inside. I know a lot of interior designers use similar programs to show repositioning of certain things in the kitchen or mm-hmm. certain things in other in other parts of the house, so that they can visually get the um, idea of how that's going to look in their home or in their backyard. And I just thought pools was a really interesting thing to bring in today because I knew this was a process. You know, I knew this was going to be a couple month process. And if people are thinking about doing that, they're definitely going to want to think about that come January, February, so that they have the pool available for late spring, early summer. Sure. You know. Yeah, I wanted to add to that. Uh, As we get into these rainy months, uh, just some tips for our listeners here is that uh, uh, underground we have uh, groundwater and what's called the water table. And as we get into the winter months, we want to be cautious in draining swimming pools uh, in an area that has a high water table. Often that high water table is found at the base of slopes. Uh, If you look at your surrounding mountains, I don't know, maybe uh, let's say Stevenson Ranch or something like that where you have... Uh, you know, transition to the valley floor. Um, the water tables, generally speaking, are high in that area, and uh, it's not advised to drain your pool during those periods where you, where you have a high water table. 
The pool is a vessel. Think of it as a boat in the ground. And if the water level raises and you don't have the weight of water in the pool, it can pop out of the ground, dislodging it, breaking all of the decking surrounding it. And the only solution is to demo it out and reconstruct. So this is why they say not to empty your pool and leave it empty for a long period of time. Correct. Because you're going to do more damage than not. So if you're going to empty your pool, you want it replastered and pretty much filled back up, right, as quick as possible. Almost immediately. Yeah, I mean, um, one of the first things we do when we drain a swimming pool is we go in there with a jackhammer and we knock several holes in the floor of the deep end, allowing muddy water, if there's any present, uh, muddy water to enter the swimming pool. Muddy water, I can deal with. Pool pops out of the ground, $200,000. I don't want to deal with it. Yeah, but you know what? That makes sense to me now. When you see an empty pool, you always see a little pool, a little like pool watering Mm -hmm. that gathers in the deep end. And maybe that's because they've created that little bit of a drainage so that that doesn't happen. Could be, yes. That makes makes sense. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I I I know that was a big issue when we did a lot of short sales because people let their pools actually empty out. And then the new owners would have to replaster. Or if the water turned green, they they shock it and just create a whole new problem. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I have a question for you. With Kiwi home inspections, we do a, a general uh, home inspection uh, of the pool as well. Uh, it's, it's a visual, non-invasive inspection. But I find a lot of uh, potential um, buyers of a, of a pool existing are not aware of maintenance for the pool. Yes, um, and they see uh, point out the elastic merit compound around the expansion joint. It's cracked and yes. needs to be replaced. And we're like, well, what does that do? How come we have to do that? I didn't know that. Yeah. Do you have any recommendations? And what's what's a similar or typical maintenance of a pool? Things that you, you find need to be taken care of. Sure. Great question. Uh, so. First off, I can't stress enough that a qualified pool person is very important to your swimming pool. You don't take your brand new Mercedes-Benz car to the cheapest car wash around. Um, You'd rather employ someone that's going to take the time and care for something that you saved a lot of money for and and is important to you and your family. So, uh, you know, pool person and chemistry balance is very important. Um, But one of the things you mentioned is also really important is the expansion joint you'll find surrounding a swimming pool that's a uh, rubberized uh, lassomeric mastic. That's a a crucial functional element of the swimming pool. That allows for your pool deck to expand and contract. On a warm summer's day, you may have a 40 degree temperature rise and that pool deck will expand and contract up to a half inch every 10 feet. So on a 10 foot wide pool deck, a half inch expansion would push that pool deck into your pool wall and could create structural fractures, which could, you know, just continue to grow and and, and be a a bigger problem than snowball. So that rubberized joint that's around your swimming pool doesn't seem like it does anything for you. It's very important, and um, I would suggest employing or at least uh, acquiring some quotes to replace it if it's not in good shape. Um, water can penetrate it, and if you have expansive soil, it can also cause other issues where your deck will lift in the air, et cetera, et cetera. Now, how long is that usually good for? I mean, how often should we be looking at it? Uh, it varies. It depends how active it is. Um, <clears throat> if it's expanding, attracting. Southern California, it's uh, kind of a big deal for us. A lot of people will see tiles on their swimming pool at the water line popping off. This is another very good tip for you all. Um, to simply replace that tile that's popped off for those 10 tiles that popped off. You may have done it already, some of you listeners out there, and you'll notice a few years later it occurs again. Well, that's because, generally speaking, the expansion joint is not functional, and it's exerting pressure on the pool wall and causing flexion in that area, and those tiles will pop. And putting them back on is, sure, it may look nice for a barbecue, but... uh, The real problem is your expansion joint was not prepared properly or is failing and should be addressed. Hmm. You're listening to At Home with Charlene on award-winning KHTS Radio. There's a lot about pools I did not realize besides just your, your, you know, your maintaining your pool, you know, the chlorine levels in it, skimming the top of your water, making sure it looks clean. I mean, there's so much more to think about. Um, 
uh, when maintaining your pool and maintaining putting a pool in. Um, you know, one other thing I wanted to go back to Alan was um, really important that I wanted to make sure all the listeners do keep in mind is if you are looking to sell your house or you're looking to purchase a house, the making sure that water heaters strapped properly, uh, making sure, like we said, smoke detectors are in each of those rooms, carbon monoxide, because those are all things that the, the appraiser is going to note. Um, on that property when, when they come out to do the appraisal part of it. And those are things that the appraiser is going to have to come back out and make sure are in the property if they're not currently in there. Fred ha Fred wants to jump in and say something. <laughs> and I was going to say, that is not cheap for the appraiser to come back out again. Right. There is a charge for that, and that that's a charge that we can avoid if we can do everything correctly the first time. Exactly. I mean, there's certain things that Alan's going to inspect that we, you know, are, are a part of the inspection part, but smoke detectors, carbon monoxide, water heaters strapped to code, those things will, if they're done right the first time, we will not have to have the appraiser come back out and an additional charge isn't going to be charged to the buyer for those items. So that's just a huge thing to keep in mind too. But um, a, lot, a lot of those things are relating to safety issues too. So uh, that's a big concern we have when we're looking at houses. Is the house safe? Is this, you know, smoke detectors in place, carbon monoxide in place? You mm -hmm. mentioned the, the water heater. Is it strapped correctly for, for earthquake? Yeah, we're in earthquake country here. Mm -hmm. Just like New Zealand where I come from, we get the, shack, the, the shaking, the rattling, and the rolling. Is it strapped in a way that conforms to the standards we need done today to you know, keep things safe in that area? And, you know, I think everybody wants every little item fixed sometimes on the home inspection. And that's really... I mean, it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. I would say, like you said, the, the major items, your plumbing, your electrical, your foundation, mm -hmm. your roof. I mean, major things like that should be the biggest concern. Correct. And that's the, all the big ticket items, you know, your, your heating and cooling systems. Are, are, are they functioning as they should be right now? You know, I will get up in the attic and I will uh, check on the, the furnace in, in the attic, mm -hmm. make sure we've got a good flame combustion chamber going on. We've got a good adequate heat coming from each room in the house. And then again on the, on the AC side, do we have a good what we call differential temperature? Uh, we, we measure the temperature that goes up through the filter. And by the way, filters change them out regularly. I was that just gonna. Better. I was just gonna say that. <laughs> How often should you be changing your filter for your? Right, and then kind of quality of air makes a difference. So we're in a like where I live in Acton, we got a lot of dust, so we got to change them out more regularly. Uh, for us, it's every three months at the most, and we, mm -hmm. we, we're looking at it visually. Okay, it's accumulating a lot of dust on it. We want to get it cleaned off to, and not restrict the airflow going through it. I've been in different houses where it's, I can see the filter being trying to be sucked into the unit because it's so dirty, it's not allowing air to I come through. I mean, there through. might be some people that don't know they need to change that. Correct. So you know, an average they, at least four or five months, twice a year at least. On, on and a, keep a couple on hand. So correct. You could, now, can you easily hose those off and put the same one in, or do you recommend them taking that one out, throwing it away, and putting a brand new one in? Uh, you can buy uh, washable ones, which are nice to have, uh, the design for that. Um, the quick and easy way is just have replacements on hand mm -hmm. and then put a new one in, keep the air flowing through it nicely. It's, it's a very good thing to have because it will affect the temperature of, of the house so if the filter is really clogged up. Um, we've, we've had I've measured differential temperatures, meaning the temperature at the, the filter where it's getting sucked into the intake. I measure the temperature there, and then I go to the, the registers throughout the house, measuring temperature there, looking for a, a 15 to 18 degree difference in temperature cooler to tell me it's working. Now, I've gone to a house and had like 8 degrees. I looked at the filter. It was terrible. We changed it out. Because there's not, there not running through the way it should be because correct. it's getting clogged at the... Right. So like anything, maintenance is important. You've got to keep it, keep it working. You maintain your car. You maintain your house as well. So the first of the year, what would you say to a homeowner if, you know, just regular maintenance on your property or if you're looking to, you know, sell your property or, you know, what are some points of your house that you should just go through every couple of months and just say, okay, this is, this is over here or what, what, what should be to, some go-to areas of the home that they're checking regularly? Um, okay, so the, the filter, of course, in, in your heating and cooling system. Um, first of the year, we're, we're coming into winter, so uh, we, we want to look at the, the roof condition a little bit, get a visual. Um, we know you, you don't want to get up on a, on a concrete tile roof unless you have the expertise in how to walk it and know what you're looking at. Um, but if you have an asphalt shingle roof, we had one today, 
I drove up, I can see a glistening coming off the roof. Um, it's telling me we've got signs of wear and tear just from aging. Mm-hmm. You know, they only last so long. The sun out here bakes those roofs really hot, and they start to lose the granular, start to show the signs of the, um, underneath the roof um, layment, which is not supposed to be exposed. So, And you don't mm-hmm. want anyone to have a surprise leak come no. rainy season when you're thinking, mm-hmm. ooh, mm-hmm. I should have replaced that when I had the chance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you mean those three days when it's going to rain? <laughs> right, right. Hey, well, there's exactly. been, there's not been last a, year. <laughs> there was a couple winters where we actually had some pretty good rain. Mm-hmm. I exactly. mean, wasn't it? I mean, the winter before, I mean, I, I think it was a pretty good rainy season. Yep, yeah, last winter was good. And I can remember being on, on a couple of roofs where they hadn't cleaned out the, the rain gutters. I saw you come in yeah. with a couple Band-Aids and <laughs> he, he was a little beat up. If you, I mean, my house was one of them too, I remember. Sure, sure. But he'd come in with Band-Aids on and be like, ooh. Uh-huh. But, but just <laughs> as far as maintenance too, clean those rain gutters out. Um, I see leaves mm-hmm. and debris in the rain gutters. Now it's not directing the water away from the house. It's overflowing on the side. But what we always want water coming away from the foundation of the house. So that includes your, your grading of your property. Water flows away. Concrete is porous. It will absorb it. So look for drainage away from the house. And then do you have drains in your backyard to the front yard? Are those grates? Are they, are they blocked up or are they, are they in place? Typical maintenance. Keep things clean. Yeah. I mean, that's another thing to think about, too. I mean, your leaves i mean everything from fall you know gathered up on on the roof and in the surroundings of the roof Correct. those are good things to think about checking i mean i didn't i haven't checked mine but i think i'm going to check mine just to make sure when it does rain i don't have puddling that comes right up against the house or the doors or well, especially with all that wind we've recently had i mean things have flown around That's you may right. not have trees near your house but you probably have the leaves from down the street so oh yeah i mean our whole neighborhood is full of 30 40 plus year trees and there's leaves everywhere mm-hmm. i mean the you can't even see the street half the time it, it's packed with with you know rubbish <laughs> <laughs> well right. you're listening to at home with charlene live on khts radio and we are going to take a quick break and we'll be back to wrap up our show for today Little Eye Leaders is the newest preschool in the Santa Clarita Valley. At Little Eye Leaders, our outstanding teachers lead with intellect, perspective, and heart. That means our programs provide a warm, nurturing atmosphere to meet the unique needs of each child. We believe that play is a powerful form of learning for young children. That's why our kids have every opportunity to learn through the magic and excitement of play. Parents, schedule a tour today by calling 303-0400 or online at littleeyeleaders.org. When you're looking for a midnight snack, sometimes fast food just doesn't cut it. Formerly Donut Inn, California Bakery and Cafe is now open 24-7, so you'll be able to find fresh donuts, danishes, bagels, all-natural fruit juices, gourmet sandwiches, and much more at any hour. With elaborate cakes for any occasion, including weddings, baptisms, anniversaries, corporate events, or any special event, California Bakery and Cafe in Santa Clarita is open 24 hours to satisfy any craving, anytime. Call us, 255-1254. Buying your home can sometimes be challenging. That's why Charlene Gill with CSMC Mortgage is your Santa Clarita mortgage expert. What's important to you is to secure a loan at the best possible rate, to have a professional guide you through the process, and to close on time. Charlene's 23 years in the mortgage industry and her personal expert knowledge in the Santa Clarita Valley makes her your mortgage expert. Contact Charlene at hometownstation.com forward slash Charlene. That's hometownstation.com forward slash Charlene. Coming soon to the Canyon Santa Clarita, Stone Temple Pilots, Wilson Phillips, Kenny Wayne Shepherd, Andrew Dice Clay, Jefferson Starship, John Hyatt, Jim Messina, The Spinners, Doc In, Lynch Mob, English Beat, Sinbad, The Tubes, Ambrosia, Steve Tyrell, Melissa Manchester, Missing Persons, and many more. Plus soulful Sunday brunch every Sunday, country nights on Wednesdays, throwback Thursdays, and they're the perfect place to host your parties and special events. The Canyon Santa Clarita, where music meets the soul. Tickets available through Ticketmaster. Do you like to rock across Africa? Then the wait is over. Africa rocks! Africa's Greatest Hits is now available at the San Diego Zoo! And who could forget 99 Red Baboons? (laughs) Or the African Crested Porcupine Smash Hit, I Got Quills to Pay the Bills! Hey, don't get too close. And the hits keep on coming. Africa Rocks has all your favorites from six different African habitats. Hungry like a leopard. Ibex is bad. Harder, better, fossa stronger. And a new track from Kendrick Lieber. 
Now, Larry. Yes, Chuck? A collection of this magnitude might fly to Africa. Well, don't pack your bags, friend. Africa Rocks is only available right here at the San Diego Zoo. Wow, that really does rock. No, it Africa Rocks. Welcome to Africa Rocks. Experience six different African habitats, including our first ever aquatic enclosure with African penguins, only at the San Diego Zoo. It isn't often when we see a company launch in Santa Clarita and become an international sensation. In 2010, Jen Gerard founded Whitening Lightning in her Valencia kitchen. Now it's a booming international sensation. Leading actresses and international models have switched to Whitening Lightning to avoid the mess, hassle, and sensitivity of other products. Whitening Lightning's simple Dial a Smile kit will dramatically turn your teeth wider in just 20 minutes. Rediscover how white your teeth can look. Visit whiteninglightning.com. Whiteninglightning.com. Com. Hometown. Hometown. Your hometown station. I just like the variety of music. KHTS. Welcome back to At Home with Charlene with Charlene. Um, I just wanted to say thank you so much to my guests today. We're going to hit on a few bullet points, but I just want to make sure um, Alan Clarkson with Kiwi Home Inspection excellent excellent we use him all the time i know he's big in our in our industry and i know he is huge in santa clarita please reach out to alan he he does an excellent job i've got matt fuller with fuller pools knows the ins and outs of putting a pool in maintaining a pool helping you with whatever you need um, whenever you need that Um, i've known both of them for a very long time and i bring everybody on the show that i think will provide you with great service and, and, and information that I think would help you and as a, as a homeowner. So we had a few quick tidbits that we wanted to touch on. Um, Matt was going to talk about just a few safety issues and, and whatnot in the pool area. Yeah, so as we get closer to winter, um, I just wanted to share a few things that are uh, known by people in our industry, but maybe not by homeowners. Um, swimming pool pumps are... Um, made in a way that it, but they're, they're they're suitable for outdoor obviously to be outside but uh, in the severe downpours um, these pumps need to breathe and they have louvers on them little uh, breathing slots if you will for the electric motor and if we're in a bad downpour it is um, somewhat common for the water to bounce off the ground and into the electric motor short, shorting out that motor so this winter if you find yourself in a heavy rain and you're home uh, you may consider shutting down your pool pump for a period of time until it uh, tapers off. That's one detail that, um, you know, every year, you know, we encounter, I don't know, five, ten pumps that need to be replaced, and it's usually the day after the, the downpour. Uh, so we think that's probably um, why. Uh, what about pool safety? I think we were going to touch on Yeah, that's a good, good, a good point. As something, uh, Kiwi Home Inspections, uh, a, a general inspection of a, of a swimming pool, uh, our number one concern is access for children to the pool. Um, is there access for your personal kids, their, their friends coming over with the kids, and neighborhood kids mm-hmm. can get through as well. So we're always looking for access for, for, for um, how a ch- child can get through, whether it be in the side garage door, um, can it, is, it, is the gates not self-closing, self-latching. Um, but Matt, I know you're the expert in, in, in this field, and I'd really appreciate you know, the listeners hearing some, some great advice from you. Sure. Whenever pulling a permit, um, not that it should be dictated by that, but by the governing uh, building department, but uh, you know, safety is important, and it's required when constructing a new pool or remodeling an existing. It is required to have a five-foot-tall fence that surrounds the swimming pool. That can be your perimeter fence. It doesn't have to wrap around directly around the water of the pool or deck. It can be your perimeter fence, but that five-foot-tall fence needs to um, not have any horizontal toeholds on your neighbor's side. I say toeholds, envision a ladder or uh, you know some sort of um, item that allows, say, ornamental iron or something like that that allows for a child to get a toehold or grip to be able to scale that fence, end up in that backyard unsupervised, and, and you know, something unfortunate happens. So uh, five-foot-tall perimeter fencing is required. Gates open outward away from the pool area. Be self-closing and self-latching with latches at 54 inches above grade with no openings on that gate larger than four inches. So um, the way it's 
measured as a, the inspector will have a four inch sphere, four inch in diameter, and if it passes through, then that's not a, a, a so fence. What if you have a gate that runs from like the front side of the house and you open that gate and that goes into your pool area? So really anybody could access that. Would you recommend putting a little lock of some sort on there so you don't have any neighborhood kids, you know, filtering through your pool area while you're at work? Or I mean, because you, you don't want to be responsible for anybody getting onto your property and jumping in your pool and getting hurt, God forbid. Or Yeah. Yeah, it's something we, um, you know, keep play closely in the pool industry. We, nobody wants that on their hands uh, for many reasons. And yes, I would recommend uh, locking any gates that aren't, commonly used um making sure that your gates are self-closing you can make adjustments on the little springs that are on the actual hinge these sorts of things um you know just by saying it to this large listener base you know we may save a life so i think it's important that uh you take a second and think about your enclosure and make sure that uh you know you've done what you can to um eliminate liability and keep people safe around you now something i've heard on it again you know, this is just stuff I hear about. Um, if I have a sliding class door that goes to the backyard, do I have to have some sort of a bell or alarm system when that door is opened? You do, sir. In, okay. in California and many other states, um, it's required when we construct a new pool to um, permanently install, and that's how the code reads, permanently install a, uh, a alarm system that's, I forget the number, but it's above 110 decibels. It's so darn loud. I've listened to them all my career. That's why I can't hear well. Now, this is only if it points directly to the pool area? If it exits the home to the pool area. Directly. If, if it exits the dwelling to the pool area inside the enclosure. So, like, if you have a side door mm -hmm. and your fence is in the front, that would need to be alarmed, alarmed also. Yes. Mm -hmm. Putting Installing often about 90% of our swimming pools we install um, using cover biz, um, cover stars, pool cover systems, automatic vinyl cover that provides safety, locks in heat, uh, and also reduces, um, you know, loss efficiencies in terms of water evaporation and, and chemistry. About 60% of your water is drawn out of, a, I meant to say, 60% of the chlorine is drawn out of your water by UV rays. That's why if anybody out there has a swimming pool, you notice once a year you get charged for conditioner by your pool person. Mm. A conditioner is basically sunglasses or suntan lotion for the chlorine. It, it keeps the chlorine inside the pool. If you didn't do that each year, if you added a gallon of chlorine to your pool, well, you really only added 40% or so. Oh, wow. I, I, I do. I get that bill for that particular thing. <laughs> so now I know, and that now you know how, what conditioner I know is. the importance of that. <laughs> yep. Well, I just want to thank my special guest today, um, Alan, again, with Kiwi Home Inspection, dear friend, excellent at his job, uh, Matt Fuller with Fuller Pools, uh, long-term friend of mine, um, my co-host today, Fred Tizartis with Century 21 Troop, um, just a great group of people, um, a wealth of knowledge between everybody sitting here today, and uh, just want to really wish everyone a, a happy new year. We're going into a new year. I wish everybody health, prosperity, um, many, many fun family trips. Um, you know, I truly wish everyone to have, have a great year. Let's, let's get it off to a good start. And thank you for always tuning into our show. Uh, we appreciate every listener we have. We hope you continue to tune in. Again, we're at home with Charlene live on KHTS Radio. Thanks for joining us today and have a great afternoon.